to head back into town. Well, don't tell me you're hungry again. It's been dang near an hour since we ate. Besides, we're just here to celebrate the general's birthday. It can't take that long. Bye. Thanks for coming. Now, uh, thank you, ma'am. You're unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> but I'm healthy. <laughs> you know, all this, uh, this fuss is, uh, is a little embarrassing. Imagine changing the name of my hometown. A uh, Clear Creek was a good name. It had, it had a good sound to it. I think Cloninger has a marvelous ring to it. Wouldn't doubt you two had something to do with the statue business. Now, what do you know about the statue? Well, I, let's say I wouldn't want to recommend your security officer. Oh, Willis! Ira, I assure you the statue was a spontaneous gesture from the people of Cloninger. Flattering? I don't know how spontaneous it was, at least. You know, I'm human enough to enjoy it. <laughs> I, I still think you two are up to something. Now, Ira, you've had a brilliant career. Many honors have been bestowed upon you. Decorations. Your hometown wants to add one more to a long list. Now, what is the matter with that? Ben, <laughs> you are beginning to sound like the judge here. <laughs> but the flowery speech and you wrote a long way to make it. <laughs> you wanted me, sir? Yes, Sergeant. Give me some help with this infernal sash. It's uh, not the only puzzle I can't figure out around here. not only ran my headquarters company like a Swiss watch, he found time to learn how to tie one of these sashes properly. Well, <laughs> somebody had to. <laughs> Insubordination, if ever I heard it. <laughs> Judge, isn't there some way we can discipline a retired sergeant? I doubt it. <laughs> General? Oh, Mr. Freed. Barnabas Freed. Mr. Freed is a, a reporter, San Francisco Journal. The journal sent you clear down here. They must have heard about the celebration. No, they didn't send me. I was uh, passing through Cobus and... Well, whatever uh, your reason for coming, you're, you're just in time for the festivities. I'm not interested in the festivities, General. I came down here to get a story on you and the man you killed out here yesterday. changed much, Mr. Freed. Still the gadfly. Well, General, I'm a reporter, and I try to say exactly what I mean. And I say it's likely that a murder took place here yesterday. Titan! Sir, he can't talk Hurry, like that to you. Well, there was some trouble here yesterday. A horse thief was shot and killed. And the law was duly informed. Did you know about this? Yes. And the um, hearing, when is it? The sheriff investigated. The facts were clear and simple. No hearing. Sergeant! Well, get some air now, Willis. Come on. Yes, sir. Still doesn't like reporters, eh? Some reporters. See, when he was with us, Mr. Freed liked to travel with, with the advance patrols, or ahead of them, contrary to all orders. Well, Sergeant Willis put a stop to that, and it, uh, it made Mr. Freed very unhappy. Well, that's all past history, General. It's already in the books. I'm interested in uh, yesterday. By the way, was uh, Willis with you when the horse thief was killed? Yes, he was. He was. And there will be a hearing day after tomorrow at my insistence. I think the general has been very patient, Mr. Freed. I came all this way to find out what happened, and he still hasn't told me. 
You're interrupting a uh, very... That's, that's all right, Judge. Sergeant Orlis and I surprised three horse thieves on my property, all armed, stealing my horses. We tried to capture them. There was some shooting. And I killed one of the horse thieves. And what happened to the other two? They got away. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. We should be leaving. There's a birthday celebration in town waiting for the guest of honor. Certainly, certainly, my dear. We'll, we'll be right with you. Oh, Mr. Freed, why don't you join us? You know, this could be interesting. You might actually enjoy yourself. Come on, come on. be a disappointment, having what looked like a big story just plain vanish. I didn't know it had. It has, and the hearing will prove it. If you wait around until tomorrow, I can promise you an even bigger story. Judge, front and center, we can't start without you. Be right with you, Ben. A story that'll make headlines, even in San Francisco. Privileges of rank. Have enough rank, you can sweep anything under the rug, even murder. I'm afraid you lost me, mister. The general killed a man here yesterday. Now they're getting the whitewash out. I'm sure I don't have to tell you why we're gathered here today. There isn't a true son or daughter in Nevada who doesn't know and honor the name of General Ira Cloninger. Catwalk Ridge, Stacy's Pass, King's Mill, Atalaya, Cold Harbor, the campaigns on the Rosebud and the Snake. All these and more have placed General Cloninger's name indelibly in the histories our children will read. <laughs> Let it also be known that his courage and leadership did not go unheeded in his own time by his own people. You really believe all this? Look, if you don't like this speech, why don't you leave? I'm a reporter. I hear an ugly rumor, and I want to check it out for the truth. When people get evasive, I get very, very curious. Yeah, well, rumors are just rumors, aren't they? I guess most of them are pure lies, huh? Above and beyond the call of duty. About half of them. Well, what makes you think this one's the truth? But the love of the man in his An itch. An instinct. After a lot of years, Major. you get to know. Colonel it may make sense to you, but it doesn't to me. Was given the tough assignments you know where Angel's Point is? Honor. Yeah, it's Other agency land about four or five hours from here. You say he's a hero. I say he may have been once, but he's not anymore. The nation has long held you want to prove I'm wrong? In high esteem. Show me how to find Today. Angel's Point. On his birthday. Unless, of course, you're afraid it was murder. You're the reporter. You want to oh, dig up dirt? Do it on your own. Friends have a small present for him. From this moment on, this town will be known as Cloninger. <laughs> and this statue now to be unveiled is our sincere thank you to one of the great men of our time, Mrs. Cloninger. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Judge. I'm truly deeply flattered. I am indeed a very fortunate man. But the wars are now back of us. They're behind us. And now I've come back home to the land and to the people that I love. My dear wife and I will never forget this birthday. It's one of the nicest, one of the best I've ever had. I must say, I... I think the statue is much better looking than I am. Hmm? All right, my friend. Stay here with the rest of the fools and cheer for a fake legend. Hey, mister. So sure you're right. What if you're wrong? You give him a public apology? Whatever the truth is, that's what I'll print. All right, I'll take you to Angel's Point. Take the buggy down the livery stable. You'll need a horse to get up there. committee wants me to run for governor. Yes, General. The state needs a man who stands taller than its present problems. You can win, General. You'll sweep the state like nobody ever has before. I wouldn't be surprised if the other side just capitulates. I have to think about this, gentlemen. Of course. All right now, I, I think we could all use another drink. Angel's Point will be right over that next hill. Still don't see what you think you're going to find out from those Indians anyway. I expect to be able to prove they're not horse thieves. The sheriff did investigate. The sheriff was elected by the people that changed the name of Clear Creek to Cloninger. Those same people are putting the general's statue up in the town square right now. Now, a sheriff that threw mud on that statue, he could be out of work. You sure got a big hate on for that general, don't you? No. But I do know him. Why don't we go find out if I'm right? Follow me, Mr. Reporter. questions. Put the gun away. They're not the general's men. Seven days we trailed the herd down the mountains and across the reservation and into the canyons. They were not good horses. But when you're on foot, any horse is a good one. A long trail. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Chief Greybuck, have I got that right? Sam Greybuck. When we come to the agency, we take names from the great book. I am Samuel. My son is Thomas. He was my son, Jacob. Look, Greybuck, if you caught those horses like you said, why would the general want to take them away from you? He had a herd of his own. I know the general. We are old enemies. Uh, Greybuck, are you saying that there was bad blood between you and the general and that's the reason he killed your son, Jacob? I say we crossed this land with my horses. Now, Jacob is dead. A white general does not prove what is his. He sees and he takes. 
The only proof of what you've told us. Were the horses branded? No brands. Well, that should be proof of a sort. Uh, the general's horses should be branded. Yeah, they should be, but a lot of ranchers don't bother to brand their remount horses. They just let them run loose like the ones Greybuck found. No brands, no marks, nothing. Did anybody see you catch those horses? Only a rabbit and a hawk. Jacob sold one of the horses to a man near Tornapal. Well, who was this man? Did you get his name? No. It's not gonna be any proof. For Jacob, we need no proof. The horses will be ours. Look, Greybuck, there's a legal way to handle this. Now, the treaty says... The thief's treaty! First they take our land, then our horses. Now our sons. Well, what's your best guess, Joe? Uh, I'm not changing my mind, but I admit I'm wondering if they're telling the truth. Well, you're the reporter, why ask me? I'm not gonna get anything else out of Greg, but no. Let's get some sleep. We'll start back first thing in the morning. I knocked on his door. He'll be right down. Oh, thank you, Willis. Uh, will you need me anymore? No, you had a busy day. Why don't you go get a little rest now? I had a good day. I liked every minute of it. Good night. Good night. Oh, Ben, I, I don't want to steal your sleep, but uh, no, I wanted to talk to you alone. Oh, it's always a pleasure, General. I was just getting a little reading done before I got to sleep. Oh, I need your help. Now, uh, sit down, will you? Thank you. Want, want some of this coffee or a drink? No, I'll have a little coffee. Thank you. Uh, that's fine. Uh, Judge Donovan, uh, he's an honest man. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, as you know. We hunt together, we fish together, and we tell tall tales to each other. <laughs> but uh, I'm feeling he's prejudiced. In what way? Well, in my favor. Well, he wants me to be governor. That disturbs you? He was only one member of that nominating committee. I'm sure he told you your selection was unanimous. I'm not a politician, Ben. I, I'm just an ex-soldier trying to build a horse ranch. You were a commanding general. So I was, but uh, I'm not sure that qualifies me. Uh, you, you want me to run, hmm? You must have your reasons. Hmm? I'd like to know what they are. One big reason, Ira. The war tore this country apart. The hatreds and wounds are still with us. There are men here in Nevada who wore the gray who won't even speak to men who wore the blue. And so the war still goes on. Precisely. But you've been able to close the gap. After Appomattox, you had men and officers from the Confederacy serving in your command. We had our problems, too, Ben, a lot of them. But you ironed them out. And now you have men from both armies working in your ranch. A few ranch hands, yes, but that, uh, that doesn't constitute a state. It takes a very special talent to bring men together. Now, the men on the nominating committee are from both sides. But there was one thing we all agreed upon. We need your leadership in our state house. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much.
anything wrong? No, no. Uh... Bertie, how do you... How do you really feel about my running for governor? Does it matter? Hasn't it? Always. I can think of once or twice it didn't. You never listen to anyone when it's something you believe in. You have the courage of your convictions. I respect you for that. I love you for it. Honey, this this isn't a command decision. This this is for both of us to decide. You'd be a fine governor. We won't have as much time to spend together. You have been patient with me now for 42 years, isn't it? 42 years. Bertie, you think you can be patient for four more years? I've been happy for 42 years. So long as we're together, I'll be happy anyway. You're a sweetheart. Absolute sweetheart for 42 years. Bertie, you will make a absolutely radiant governor's lady. Absolutely radiant. You mm. will. Oh, you I don't know. Mm. Judge is a, a late riser, but then Ben is a rancher. I thought, uh, I thought he'd probably be up and stirring around by now. Well, so far, not a sound out of him, sir. Coffee at first light, the way I like it. The rest of the world's still asleep, Sergeant. You know something, General? The day I got my stripes and started as your orderly, you had me a little scared. I remember I was making coffee. Nobody up but the birds, and I turned around, there you were. Yes, sir, that's when I knew I was going to like this job. The backside of the back.
brought the gun. They have my son. You should have let the Redskin fight it out here, Cartwright. He's going to hang anyway. Conninger! You killed Thomas, my son. I warned you, Greybuck. You did not have to kill him. You were in my corral on my land. Your land. That does not put justice in your rifle. We came for what is ours. Six horses. You came to steal. Willis, get him into the sheriff. I'll handle it, General. Come on, move. My horses. And now you killed both my sons. I guess the charges start with attempted murder, huh? If that red devil had been a better shot, he'd have killed the greatest man in this state. Graybuck didn't shoot the general. How do you know you weren't there? This is rifle sharp. Why don't you check it? Clean. Hasn't been fired recently. This one has. They took it off the young Indian, the one that got himself killed. Attempted murder, then. All persons involved in the commission of a felony are equally guilty. Right, Judge? Yes, that's the law. Now, do you want to add horse stealing to this? Well, Graybuck said that six of the horses in the corral belonged to him. Mr. Cartwright, Graybuck is lying. He told us the same thing last night. Where was this? Up at Angel's Point. I was there. I heard it, too. Oh, where are you now? The two of you talking to wanted men. But you didn't report it, and you didn't bring them in. I ought to lock you both up. Why don't you do that? My paper would love the story and the headlines, but I doubt if the general would. Well, there's no reason to get excited, gentlemen. I'm sure the question of the ownership of the horses will be looked into. There's no looking into needed. Them in Save just... your testimony for the hearing, Mr. Willis. When will that be, Judge? Tomorrow. Is resting comfortably, napping. The doctor said his wound is not serious. That's good news. I looked for you when the doctor left, but you weren't in the house. I saw you in the corral. I'm a direct woman. When something troubles me, I go straight to the source. Why were you looking at our horses? Graybuck said he came to get horses that belonged to him. And what did you find? Well, I found uh, some of the horses were bone thin. Two of those had split hooves. Ben, are you giving credence to what a horse thief said? Are you trying to build a case against Ira? Well, it makes no difference what I think. There will be questions. When a man runs for high office, everything he does is... Let them ask questions. Ira has nothing to fear. He spent his, his life under the spotlight. Every act, every order, subject to the closest scrutiny. There is not a black mark on his record anywhere. I agree. The nominating committee examined his record very carefully. Then how can you doubt him? I didn't say I did. Split hooves. We have rough and rocky country on our ranch. And places where the grazing is poor. 
I'm sorry, Ben. But it hurts to think that a good friend could even... Yesterday, you asked Ira to run for governor. The fact that renegades tried to steal his horses hasn't changed him. He's the same splendid man he was yesterday. Oh, not quite, my dear. I'm one day older. Ira, you're supposed to be resting. I was, I was, yes, but I heard my name being mentioned in vain. I decided to join you. But uh, the doctor said... On our first rule, never listen to the doctor. Dear, we could use a little coffee. Huh? Ben, you know, these walls look thick, but some voices go right straight through them, and, and hers is one of them. What's troubling you, Ben? Two men have been killed. Two Indian horse thieves, yes. There would have been three dead men if that bullet that hit me had been about three inches lower and a little to the right. Yes, I'm well aware of that. You know, that hearing will find me blameless. And even the mud-raking newspapers will have to print the verdict. I suppose the others will probably suggest that I be given another medal, hmm? Well, while we're waiting for the coffee, Ben, why don't, uh, why don't we have a drink to the opposition? Where's Hoss? Well, my guess, he's finishing his second steak about now. He got the send of the tenth telegram, his appetite got the better of him. I don't blame him, I could use a steak myself. Come on, I'll buy. Fourteen telegrams altogether. Every sheriff and newspaper office between here and the Nez Perce Reservation. Now, well, Graybuck did say that nobody saw him catch those horses. Yeah, but he didn't say that nobody saw them after they caught them. Here, there he comes. Well, brother, how's the steak? Eh, it's all right, a little small, so I had two of them. <laughs> now, what'd I tell you, huh? You know, Graybuck lost one man at the General's ranch. Why did he go back a second time? He's in his purse. So? Well, he ain't a man without a horse. The better horse he's got, the prouder he is. And if somebody steals his horse? <laughs> He'll just keep going back till he gets it. Yeah, they kill him. Hey, there's a better restaurant around the corner, and I hear they got great steaks. Wanna try it? I think I'll join you. I ain't had no dessert yet. Yeah, right, we have two steaks for dessert. I looked out the window and I saw two Indians in my corral stealing my horses. But what did you do then, General? Well, I did what any man would do if someone were stealing his property. I got a rifle and went outside to stop them. I yelled a warning and I fired a warning shot and I didn't stop them. They opened fire. I returned the fire. And they were riding out on my horses when I hit one of them. And one of them shot you. That's right, yes. I was a couple of steps behind the general coming out of the house. But it's exactly as he said. This is your chance, Greybuck. We're waiting to hear your side of this. After a white general speaks in a white man's court, who hears what a nurse purse says? Well, you better speak while you have the chance. Very well. Prisoners to be held for trial on charges already read. Hearings adjourned. General, get some rest, huh? Oh, I will, Judge. See you later, Ira. Ben. Ben, we've been invited to the General's ranch for supper and a strategy meeting. As members of the nominating committee, I... Yes, I know. We're obligated. You run a nice, fast hearing, Judge. Which your paper will duly report. I hear you've been burning up the telegraph wires. Your sources are accurate? No answers. One. The Nez Perce Reservation. Graybuck, Thomas, and Jacob had permission to leave the reservation on foot to hunt wild horses. Not wild horses, Mr. Freed. Unbranded horses. 
and they found them on the general's ranch. Ready, and they're building the scaffold tomorrow. This is your only chance. Get up. If I say no, you get a bullet now. Well, as I told you, they would. The, the hearing completely exonerated me. Now, that is in the past. We can uh, turn our attention to more important things. I think I should uh, begin my campaign right here in Cloninger and then stump the whole state. What do you think? Fine idea, man. Ben, you agree? Well, I... I can't agree that it's all in the past. I don't think the trouble has begun yet. You're kidding. Oh, there will be a trial. Of course, mere formality, and the jury will find Gray Buck guilty. What? Of all the charges, Ben. Uh, attempted murder, horse stealing, uh, trespassing. You look dubious. Is something troubling you? Something wrong? Well, I was... I was wondering why the... First killing hadn't been mentioned at the hearing. Well, the sheriff investigated, Ben. Yes, the father I was completely justified. That's right. What did it happen? What difference? Tell him, Ari. I have nothing to hide. Of course I haven't. About a mile south of here. On my land. That's open range, isn't it? Yes. Well, any man can ride across open range without hindrance. Any man, yes, Ben. Any white man. But not savages. Not Indian horse thieves. You knew them to be horse thieves? Well, Indians on my land. What else? Did you talk to them? Talk? Why should I? You don't have to talk to savages to know what they are. Worthless, no good animals. Ira, that isn't really what you mean. The hell it isn't. Huh. I fought them through three campaigns. I know them for what they are. The enemy. You don't understand, Ben. I don't understand. Please, explain it to me. The blue and the gray were enemies, yes, but that was different. Two armies, decent men, opposed to each other, fighting for what the hell was right. And when it was over, you worked to bring both sides together. Now, that's the leadership we want, Ben. The Indian wars are over. Peace has been made. Treaties have been signed. War Department mistakes. We should have killed them all while we had a chance. It would be a much better world today. Ira. You feel you have the right to kill an Indian simply because he rides across your open range? A thieving, murdering, scalping, mutilating savage. Yes, I do. And I will every chance I get. Ira, don't say that. He has said it. I'll report this to the nominating committee. 
as I must. I'm certain the court will ask about this, too. You're turning your back on me after all I've done for this country. You're turning your back because of red filth not fit to walk the earth. Go ahead. Talk to the committee, Mr. Cartwright. And when you're through with them, you'll find they still want me as governor. I'll be at the hotel in town. The guest room is, is all made up, Judge. Don't you run out on me. Have another drink. General. All right. morning. You can't just sit here. Go to bed, Bertha. Are you sure you're all right? Go to bed now, Bertha. I thought you ought to know, sir. No, I thought it's... Gray Buck escaped, sir. He's loose. He escaped? Gray Buck is loose? Oh? Oh, 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 oh. I'm glad to hear it. I'll find that thieving savage, and I'll kill him, and stand completely vindicated. I heard someone yelling. That was a battle cry, Judge. Gray Buck is out of jail. He's my Indian now. I'm going to run him down and kill him and prove to Cartwright, that committee, and to everyone else that I was right all the time. I think you ought to let the law handle this. I'm in charge here. Don't tell me what to do. Don't even try. I'll saddle the horses. You're not going anywhere, Sergeant. But General, sir. Sit down and shut up! Both of you. That's an order. Buck's gone. I'm getting a posse together to go after him. How'd he get away? He had help. I know who it was. I caught a glimpse of him just before he cracked my skull. He'll answer to me, but I want that end in first. So, Gray Buck's gone. How convenient. No Gray Buck, no trial. And no scandal to knock the general out of the gubernatorial race. 
But there will be a scandal, and a howling scandal, Graybuck or no Graybuck. Just what are you talking about? I'm talking about these. Two telegrams. One from a sheriff a hundred miles from here who says he saw Graybuck, Thomas, and Jacob ride through his town with seven horses. The other's from a newspaper editor who says he bought one of those horses. I sold one. That leaves six. Graybuck said the general stole six horses from him. And shot and killed two, um, Indians to do it. No, he didn't shoot them for the horses. He shot them because they were Indians. His land. Get him undressed and into bed. Right in here. Oh. <laughs> I'm burning up, Doc. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Here, Doctor, I'll do that. One powder every six hours. And not more than three in 24 hours. Yes, I know you told me before. So I have. Influenza, Ben. First I've seen in over three years. And I drink this. Come on. Come on now. And drink it all. Miss Harry can be a tyrant, but she obeys orders, and that's the important thing. I'm glad she was available. Yes, so am I. Ben, we may have a small epidemic on our hands. You shouldn't even be here. Um, what can we do about it? I mean, what should we do? Isolate these two men. Don't let anyone near East Camp who hasn't already been there. This can go through a town like a scythe through ripe wheat. Now, under normal circumstances, the disease runs its course in four to five days. But there can be complications, sometimes fatal. Dr. Woodtree locked up here. Well, I'm George Woodtree, yes, ma'am. Dr. George Woodtree. I'm Mrs. Woodtree. I'd like to visit my husband. Well, Mrs. Woodtree, the visiting hours are uh, later this, this time. This is boot shining hour. 
Well, no, ma'am. Jail's never a pretty place. We have regular visiting hours, two to three every afternoon. That way it gives us a chance to get tidy. I want to see my husband. Well, ma'am, the rules are... Yes, ma'am. Angie, how lovely to see you. George, I got straight off the stage and I went right to the hotel and the clerk told me that you've been arrested. But I'm a fool, Vanjie. Well, we're all fools at times. What happened? Well, Dr. Martin... I told a lie, Vanjie. I got caught. I went to see all the men on the list we made, one by one. Well, they all agreed that Virginia City needed a hospital. I told them I wanted to start small, four or five beds, a dispensary. They like that. Well, anyway, then they asked me where I went to school. Well, they never heard of church college. They thought I made it up. Well, what did they say? They said I was a bit young to head up such a project. But I had one more man to see, Ben Cartwright. I told him I was a graduate of Harvard Medical School. Well, he gave me a check for $300. I deposited in a hospital account. It's now attached by the court. Well, where does this Dr. Martin come in? Well, he went to Harvard, you see, and he's got all the yearbooks. Well, my name's not in any of them. And he reported it to the sheriff and the man who gave you the money? Fraud, swindle, theft. Well, Church College isn't Harvard. But it is a very fine medical school, and you are a doctor. <laughs> that Dr. Martin, he's a terror. He's got Ben Cartwright believing that I'm a menace to mankind. Where do I find this, Mr. Cartwright? Angie. Now, I got myself into this mess. There's no reason for you to get involved. Where do I find him? On the Ponderosa. The biggest ranch in Nevada. How do you do, ma'am? Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to see Mr. Cartwright. Oh, we have three Mr. Cartwrights here. If it's little Joe you want, he's over at the East Camp. No, Benjamin Cartwright. Oh, well, he's in the bunkhouse right now. Um, just about everybody is. <laughs> I'll wait. Thank you. Oh, all right. Well, why don't you wait inside where it's warm, and I'll go get him for you. How do you feel? Me? Huh. I feel good. No headache, pains, chills? Nope, no. Nope. I feel frisker than a hat full of hummingbirds. <laughs> hummingbirds? That's interesting. Yeah. You, Ben? No, just normal. There's a lady that wants to talk to Mr. Carr, right? I'll tell him. Thank you. You didn't need to go to all that trouble. Lady come call? Hopsing not go to all that trouble? Hopsing be in trouble. <laughs> Mr. Carwright was busy, so I told the lady out there, the nurse, and she said she'd tell him. Oh, well, there's no hurry. All right. Like a cookie. Oh, yes, thank you. What did you say your name was again? Jamie, Jamie Penner. Hello, Jamie. Hi. I could use some hot coffee before I start that cold ride. How about some of Pop Singh's apple pie? I was hoping you'd say that. Her name is Mrs. Clinton, and she's sure not very friendly. Pop Singh! This is the lady I told Mrs. Clinton about. She said she'd tell you. Well, she must have forgotten. Benjamin Cartwright. Yes, ma'am. I'm Evangeline Woodtree, Dr. Woodtree's wife. Woodtree? The man who said he graduated from Harvard Medical School? Yes, he said that, but it's not true. Uh, Mrs. Woodtree, this is Dr. Joshua Martin. Who did graduate from Harvard. I did. And I get and keep the yearbooks. That's why your husband is in jail. Well, haven't either of you ever made a mistake? Well, of course, Miss Woodry. There's a difference between an honest mistake and outright fraud. There was no fraud intended, Doctor. Madam, your husband lied. He obtained money under false pretenses. I can explain it, if you'll let me. 
You want to get your husband out of jail. He sent you out here to... No. He didn't want me to come. Uh, lady came quite a long way to tell a story. I think we ought to hear it, Doctor. Thank you. All right, but let's make it brief. I have patience to see. Um, Jamie, see what's keeping up saying. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, won't you please sit down? Virginia City needs a hospital, and my husband wants to build one. He is a doctor. He graduated from church college. Well, why did he say he graduated from Harvard Medical School? Well, George looks a lot younger than he really is, and the men that he spoke to doubted the existence of a college that they'd never heard of. Where is church college? It's in Ireland, doctor, near Dublin. Your husband got his diploma. Yes, of course he has a diploma. When I was at Harvard, we heard about schools that sold diplomas. No students, no classes. Just mail in five dollars and get a diploma. We got one for a mule. A church college is a fine medical school. Unfortunately, we don't have yearbooks to prove it. <clears throat> Mrs. Woodtree, you realize, of course, I, I had to sign that complaint. Because I insisted. Well, it, it seemed like fraud. It was. Madam, for your sake, I'm sorry your husband is in jail. But he did commit a crime. And unless he's punished, he'll be practicing somewhere else and killing some of the patients who trust him. He's a doctor. I find that hard to believe, Mrs. Woodtree. Because he said he went to Harvard? That one foolish lie? I came here hoping to find some understanding. But I see now that I was terribly wrong. What happened? I'm seeing. Free now. May I help? Get away, please. Clear away. This man has influenza, and I don't want you exposed. Well, I have been, Doctor. He brought me coffee. Well, let's get him to bed. <laughs> we'll be happier here than in the bunkhouse. He's not going to be happy any place for a few days. Harriet can look in on him. I will, too. Three patients don't make an epidemic, but they make the start of one. He's standing right here, hanging onto the table like he was afraid he'd fall down. Boy, all these people get sick. Sure is scary. They'll get better. I sure hope so. All right. Let's get at it, Jamie. Yes, sir. Mrs. Woodfrey. I have bad news. We have three cases of influenza now. Dr. Martin feels it. Quarantine. Well, in case you gentlemen are wondering how I knew, my husband is a doctor. I'll be back tomorrow as early as I can. Joshua. Yep. You've got quite a library up at your place. Surely you must have some book that'll list all the medical colleges around the world, haven't you? You want me to look up Church College? Even if it exists, that won't prove Woodtree went there. There'll be a step in that direction. I'll do it if you'll do something for me. What's that? Let Harriet Clinton take care of the nursing. I doubt that Mrs. Woodtree is qualified. You sure are a stubborn man, Joshua. I am that. I'm also a doctor who worries about his patients. Oh, hi, Paul. Uh, oh, a little smoky down out there. Guess I'm gonna have to do the cooking for this bunch, so I figured I'd come in and get some stuff that I can handle. What do you got there? Beans, bacon, canned peaches? Yeah. My biscuits ain't much, but I'm pretty handy at opening cans. How much work you got left to do out there? Oh, probably about nine or ten days, that is, if nobody else comes down. I picked up this basket of eggs from Hop Singh's kitchen. Wanted to tell him about him, but I couldn't locate him. He wasn't nowhere around. No, he's down with it, too. He's in bed. Oh, 
That makes three, huh? Yeah. He was in the bunkhouse before the doctor and Harriet got here. Hey, Paul, so were you. I know, I know. We've all been exposed. That's why it's important for you to... You and Joe to keep an eye on everybody at East Camp, but on each other. Yeah, we will. Yeah. You do the same, Paul. Take it easy. Be careful. See you later. Say hello to Joe. Yeah, get up. It's like up in the corner of the map, like. North and east, Jamie. The top of the map is always north. Oh, I should have known that. <laughs> have you ever been there? Yes, I've been in Ireland. My husband went to school there. Oh. Uh, Jamie, excuse me. I'd like to talk to Mrs. Woodfield, please. Oh, yes, sir. She was nice enough to help me pick up the dishes at Hop Sink Spill. <laughs> very nice of her. Thank you very much for helping out. Sorry you were caught in this we're quarantine. We're very sorry. But it's hardly your fault. I just picked the wrong time to come calling. Well, that's true, but things like that happen. There's no need for you to... Earn my keep? Well, why not? Would you rather that I just sat in a chair and stared at the wall? Well, I'll, uh... I'll clean up around here. Besides, you know, Hopsing is ill and someone needs to take his place. I'll do that. And the menu will be charred roast and burnt potatoes. I'm a pretty good cook. Well, I'm a very good cook, and I'd be glad to take over Hopsing's duties. If you'd send a message for me. Oh, to your husband? No, to Church College in Dublin. Asking the date of Dr. Woodtree's graduation and his standing in his class. I'm in quarantine, of course, but uh, I'll have Dr. Martin send a letter for you. Not a letter, Mr. Cartwright. We grow old waiting for the answer. You've heard of the cable. The Cyrus Fields transatlantic cable, of course. Been in operation for three years. Well, the message will go by telegraph to New York, cable to London, and telegraph to Dublin. Of course, I've been looking for an excuse to send a cable for some time. Hey, Jonesy, anybody in the shack? Phillips, he's filing a saw. Where's Jimson? Said so something about cutting some more fence post timbers. Same as he's been doing all week. Yeah, when'd he leave? Oh, right after breakfast. Uh, I need somebody to help me string some wire. I'll go find him. Take it easy, huh? Hey. Hey, Josie. Get him inside out of the wind, huh? Right. Oh, oh, oh. Jump, son. Around my shoulder. Come on. There we go. Hey, Josie, did you come back into camp? Nah, I haven't seen him. It's funny, I found his axe where he was working. No sign of him. He's got to be around here somewhere. Why don't you let this go for a while? We'll settle up and look for him. All right. And wandering around out in the woods, delirious. Didn't know where he was or where the camp was. He's completely lost. Yeah, we're just gonna ride out looking for him ourselves. Well, I saved you the trip. I think I better get him on back to the Ponderosa. Yeah, you better take Charlie, too. We got him inside the shack. Is that a fact? Yeah. Jonesy? Jonesy? Hey, Don. Get some blankets. Let's get him in the way. They are sick people in here, and they don't need drafts. 
But it's so hot and stuffy in here, I thought that a breath of fresh air would... Not for them shaken apart with chills, Mrs. Woodtree. Evangeline Woodtree, and you're Mrs. Clinton. I am, and I'm in charge here. I know that, Mrs. Clinton. But I'm taking Hop Singh's place while he's ill, and I've made some soup, some beef broth. Beef broth? Sick men need solid food to get their strength back. Meat and bread and potatoes. Starve a cold and stuff a fever. That's the rule. Is that what Dr. Martin said? Well, he didn't have to say that. I've known that since before you were born. What he did say was that you're not to come out here. Wasn't told that. Yes, you cook for them in the house, and I'll do the cooking out here. Well, I'll leave the broth, just in case. the ice around the edge of the water trough. I told you she wasn't very nice. Mrs. Clinton, I just saw what she did. Well, she did what she thought was right, Jamie. <coughs> How about a glass of milk? No, thank you. Some cookies. What's the matter? I don't feel too good. Where, Jamie? Mm -hmm. My throat's sore. Kind of hurts a little when I swallow. And you have red eyes, a runny nose, and a sore throat. I, I caught it, huh? <laughs> no. You caught a cold, and you're going right upstairs to bed. do something about that stove out there. The place is as hot as a furnace. No, I, I spoke to her about that. Did she say that that was the way that Dr. Martin wanted it? No, not really. She said uh, she'd been through this many times before and she knew exactly what she was doing. Did she say how many of her patients died? It's my turn to apologize. And I do. It has been a very long day, Mr. Cartwright. Good night. Place 
in there. You could fry eggs on the floor. You gotta speak to Dr. Mont about that. Well, let's get him in. Hey, Jimson. Sore throat. It still hurts some. Well, drink this. Soup? I've never been much for soup. It's warm broth, and it's very good for you. The curtains are open. You've been out of bed. Yes, ma'am. I heard the buckboard coming. Everybody's got influenza, huh? No, not quite everyone. I saw him carrying Jimson. He's, he's pretty sick, isn't he? At the moment, yes. Is he gonna die? Not if I... No, Jamie, he's not going to die. You think that you have influenza, don't you? Well, everybody... I do have it, don't I? Listen to me, Jamie. You have a cold, and that's all you have. And you'll feel a lot better in the morning. Would you fellas get some sleep before you go? You start out the morning, get some rest. Oh, we need to get going. We're all right. Yeah, we still got men up there. Yeah, someone might be in a shape. Jimson's in or worse. All right. Be careful, huh? We'll okay. see you. Try to get as much rest as you can. I thought she'd gone to bed. Well, I started to, and then I stopped to see how you were. Uh, I'm all right. I... A bad dream? Kind of. Do you want to tell me about it? It was Jimson. Every place I looked, he was there. The man that they brought into the bunkhouse tonight. Well, Jamie, I'm sure that he's a lot better by now. Yeah. Was there something else? It's probably not the same thing. It was my pop. When he was that sick, he never get better again. I'm sorry. Jamie, try not to think about it. This is the time of night for bad dreams and things that go bump in the dark. You feel a lot better in the morning. What about Jimson? Are you sure he's going to be all right? I hope so, Jamie. With all my heart.
It's all right. says she can whip you. Well, I warned you. They need fresh air. I said that to my boss if you quiet. They need fresh air. I'm telling you that this place is... I will discuss it later with Dr. Martin. Mr. Cartwright. And I'm trying to tell you I'm trying to be polite. Now, do please go in the house. Mrs. Woodry, I don't want that to happen again. I knew what I was doing. Now, I've kept still. My mouth shut and my hands off for as long as I could. That bunkhouse is another black hole of Calcutta. I told you... One of those men is desperately ill, and he may die unless something is done and done soon. Now, you're honestly concerned, and I appreciate that. Those men out there, they're Dr. Martin's patient. <laughs> Dr. Martin will be here within the hour to take care of them. I'll get you your breakfast. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to see you soon. I thought you'd like coffee here while I start your breakfast. Thank you. That's very thoughtful of you. I'm just living up to my end of the bargain. I do the kitchen chores. And I sent a cable. I haven't forgotten. And how do you like your eggs, Mr. Cartwright? I don't think I'll, I'll have any breakfast just now. Mrs. Woodcree. You were in to see Hop Singh. Yes, I took him some broth. And you opened the window. Yes, I did. I closed it. If you don't mind, we'll wait to see what Dr. Martin has to say about the windows. Dr. Martin may not approve of fresh air, but my husband says that it would be impossible to even estimate the number of hospital patients who have died for the lack of it. I see. I suppose you learned all about broth and fresh air from your husband. Yes. George is a doctor, and the cable will prove that he graduated from Church College, third in a class of 312. Third? Well, that's... It's very good to finish third in a class with that many people in it. Yes, and we're very proud of it. Do you feel all right? Oh, I feel fine. I feel fine. Third. Third, you say. Well, finishing that how I am. I'm sure he was offered any number of good medical posts in Ireland. Well, he was. But he read of America and the West, and how everything was new here, and the doctors were very badly needed. Yes, they are. And he had this dream of a hospital of his own. I know. He told me all about it. He also told a very silly lie. But the Irish are a stubborn people, and he's not going to give up. He's... Look at me, please. Mr. Cartwright. 
Well, you're sick. No, 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 I'm just tired. No, you're sick. No, I'm just tired. You're I'll sick, like... Mr. Cartwright. Now, you're going to bed. Let me help you. Come on. I think all I need is a little rest. No, you'll get that. Lots of liquids. I have some broth here, and I'd like you to drink it. Still, it's time to be a nurse. I told you, I know what I'm doing. I told you. I told you. I told you I'd drink this. If you gave me a word, you'd stay away from the bunkhouse. I'm not saying until Doc Martin gets you. You have my word, Mr. Cartwright. <coughs> 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 Got it? Yes, he has. You keep telling me that you're the nurse around here, so you should be able to put him in bed. But horses home. He just drove up. Bringing more sick men. No, ma'am. He's alone this time. That's good news. He went down to the bunkhouse. You want me to tell him where you are? No, I expect he'll find me. And you better get back to bed unless you want to catch. Nice. You put nice water on him? Harriet told me you'd be doing something goofy, but. I am bringing your father's fever down. Lady, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but he needs more comfort. And I now. don't want to hurt you, Mr. Cartwright, but I will do my best if you try to put another blanket on this bed. Hold on, my see now. Come here, go hold Jason now. What are you Don't doing here? What Mr. Cartwright want for dinner? Hey, Hop Singh Joe told me you were sick. Oh, I'm sick. All better now? No, not yet. You belong in bed for at least another two or three days. Feel good. You very fine nurse lady. Fix up Hop Singh fine. She made you better with this same treatment? Hop sink burning up. She used a plenty of ice water, wide open window, hot broth. Does Dr. Martin know about this? Well, why don't you ask him? He's in the bunkhouse, in bed. He has influenza, too. And if you're wondering who's going to take charge now, I am. Doctor, will you 
please get back in bed? If you don't, you're going to be in worse shape than he is. Oh, madam, this is not simply influenza. That I is... know, doctor. And what I did for Hop Singh and your father. Just get her out of here. No, Miss Harry, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to help her. I need some ice. We got some ice. It's packed in the sawdust down the root cellar. I reckon I'm wasting our time. Huh? A basin of fresh water and some clean towels. Smokey. Stay in that bed. <clears throat> I'll get it. I've been I wanted to ask you. Where's Doc Martin? Well, you have several times. And several times I've answered you. Oh. Well, things were lost in the fog there for a while. Well, Dr. Martin's here. He's in the bunkhouse in bed. He has influenza, too, but he's getting much better now. And so is Mr. Jimson. What about Hop Singh and Jamie? They're doing fine. They um, aren't ready to run any foot races yet, but they sure are up and around. You've been looking after everybody? Well, I've had a lot of help. And you have not finished your broth. I do remember hearing that before. I must have had enough liquids to float a Navy. Navy. That's what everyone's been saying. Well, tomorrow you'll get to have poached eggs and toast. want any broth. I just want my trousers. So you can get in your buggy and fall out again? Oh, I feel fine. Well, you'll feel better tomorrow. Here, drink this and get back in the bed. Oh. Doc? Yeah, I know. You got a dollar that says she can whip me. Either one of them good, Doc. <laughs> Singh and I are kind of splitting up the work. He does the cooking, I do the dishes. <laughs> he only plate one or two. <laughs> How are you feeling? Very good. good. Broth already. Chicken this time. Uh, it's hot. You be careful. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Woodtree. You're welcome, Mrs. Clinton. I know what you did for the patients here. I saw and experienced it. Where did you learn it? At Scutari, from a very great lady, Florence Nightingale. The lady with the lamp. From all I've read, she... Let a lot of fresh air into many hospitals. Not to mention tearing up the British Medical Corps or writing the book on nursing. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. No, I didn't. I was too busy defending Harvard. I did admit I'd made a mistake or two, though. We both did. I told you that you could get out of bed, but that didn't mean that you could go for any long walks. Long walks? From the front door to here? Well, you try to do too much before you're completely well, and you're just going to get sick all over again. Now, please come back now, in the house. Don't argue with her, Ben. I know a man who has a dollar that says she can whip both of us. Well, I'm not going to take that path. You are both so encouraging. You know, yeah. I, you, I don't want you. Guilty as charged. <laughs> and also devious. Yes, uh, Dr. Martin and I have been in constant communication since yesterday morning. Well, how? You were in here, and Dr. Martin was outside. We had a messenger. Course. And there's something I haven't had a chance to tell you. I looked up Church College. It's a fine medical school. Perhaps not as good as Harvard. Mm, but... Perhaps even better. Then you sent the cable. Uh, no, no, I didn't. You did promise. Well, Dr. Martin and I... We decided it wasn't necessary. The doctor out there, I think, is waiting to see you. A doctor? Dr. Woodtree, come to see his wife. And the finest nurse I've ever met. Angie! Play your cards right. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't get an invite to the opening of the new hospital. 